Hi folks, Mr. Tesslonian here. Throughout a series of videos I've showed you the progression of an idea. Today I want to show you a fully working model that we're going to go out and test here in just a couple weeks. This was the simplest design that I could come up with that would function pretty well and generate power from something as simple as a moving water flow. And water flows typically that we can't tap into today with the current hydroelectric or micro hydroelectric systems that are out there. I'm holding it up right now because this is the way the unit looks when it's mounted up on its pontoon system. And I'm going to mount some legs off of it here in a moment just to give you a demonstration of how it works and kind of walk you around it. But I wanted to hold it up just so you can see how little of this is actually down into the water. The pontoons are going to be up here. The flywheel will be up a little bit higher up, up above the water line. So let me go ahead real quick and demonstrate how this machine is going to operate. Right now we're at the very bottom end of our cycle. The hydrofoil, I have it set with a 5 degree up angle at the very bottom end of its cycle. It's going to be at a 15 degree angle at the very top end of its cycle. You can go from 3 degrees up to about 15 degrees before you start getting stall out on the hydrofoil. That gives us a little bit of room to play with the speed in which we can oscillate the hydrofoil. Whether it's long, slow oscillations delivering a lot of torque and slow water flows, where we've got really short, fast oscillations giving us faster velocities on our flywheel and faster moving water flows. Real quickly, I'm going to go ahead and just oscillate through this cycle and show you how this works. That's the top end of our cycle, and you'll notice there's about a 5 degree down angle to our hydrofoil, which once again, the water flow hitting our hydrofoil at 5 degrees is going to bring it back down. Let's down again, water is going to lift it back up, down, up, down, up, down, and back up again. So there you go. The pressure from the water against the bottom side of our hydrofoil, due to the fact that it's two different sizes, we have a smaller leading edge in length and we have a trailing edge, so our trailing edge is much larger. So as it comes into contact against the roller wheel here in the front, the pressure against the back side of the blade is still great, pushing just like this, completing through the cycle. So real quick, I'm gonna just demonstrate from the side so you can see it the angle bend and the hydrofoil re-angle going down through the cycle back up and down so there you go that's what it's going to look like when it's in the water flow just like this first of all we'll start with one of these upper arms you can see here it's just a piece of square stock aluminum We've got a piece of angle aluminum here that's holding our roller wheel. This gives us the ability to adjust where the impact point's going to be of the roller wheel against our hydrofoil. Where the longer the waveform you're gonna to want to this, the shorter in your wheels are gonna be, as well as further up the actual arm is going to be mounted off of the main column arm here. So everything is mobile. You can move this up and down on the main column arm. You can also move the bottom one up and down. So you can adjust how much of a stroke you're gonna to have to the hydrofoil. Down here on the hydrofoil, you see one of our stops. The stops are what receive the power from our hydrofoil, deliver that power to the actual drive rod here, the fulcrum rod, whatever you'd like to call it on this. You can see if I get down below how those are mounted and how they're built. It's just a piece that rolls over. It gives me a nice flat plate down here for the hydrofoil to bend and hit against. That way it's not hitting against a little narrow area. We've got a nice wide area there for that to strike against. Uh, down underneath there, I've got some pieces that are riveted on that come down that'll allow the chunk of all thread to go through in different spots and locations. Nuts on there in different locations so I can tighten it down so we can adjust where the actual starting point in the hydrofoil is, what the angle is throughout the stroke, and where it returns back to on the opposite side of that by adjusting our stops. Those stops then deliver that energy up the fulcrum rod. Off of that we have our drive rod and that's a two-part drive rod right here and I have a couple U-bolts holding that together. Every time we adjust our stroke, whether it's a deep stroke or a shallow stroke, we're also going to have to adjust the stroke length of our drive rod to compensate for the adjustment there in the stroke depth of our fulcrum rod. Um, right here at the top of the drive rod, I have a basically kind of an open loop section at the end of our drive rod. And what that allows me to do is get past top and bottom dead center. You notice the drive bolt kind of comes up off of it right there as it goes over top dead center. Let me show you how this will work the side view like this by actuating the fulcrum rod. So you'll see here the top of the loop is going to come down against the drive bolt, pull it through the cycle. You see at bottom dead center how it went down to the bottom side stop. Once again at top, 
bottom, top, and there. And that allows us to have a complete rotation with the system without getting bind in our drive shaft by simply adding basically an expanded loop at the end of our drive rod right there, right against the drive bolt off the caster wheel. Real close up here, you can see when it comes to the top of the cycle, the roller wheel is going to strike right below the crest on the downhill side of the ridge of our hydrofoil right there. When it does so, the energy of the tip of the hydrofoil is going to be stopped. Down here, our hydrofoil is wider at the back side than it is in the front side. And you can see that with the kind of V design to it. The energy from the water is still hitting back here against the wider section, which is going to push that up just like that, which will come against the stop down there at the bottom when it does so. That's the end of that stroke. And you'll notice the angle of our hydrofoil up here is right at the perfect angle for the water to now impact it and drive it back down again until it hits the lower roller wheel right there. Once again, it's going to be pivoted. You'll notice from this angle, you can see the slope to the hydrofoil. So the water is now going to, once again, generate a force lifting that back up into the top roller wheel. The energy from that is going to carry and bend through just like this. Restarting the cycle, going back down. And hopefully this is coming out in a way that you can 